G'day everyone, Viv here. I hope you're all keeping well. Welcome back. It's been weeks since I've been working on this swamp board that I've mentioned a few times on my Facebook page and shown some pictures of on the uh, Australian SBG group on Facebook. You can find a link to that group in the description below. Um, I just haven't put any time into it recently. So this is part one. In this video, I've just got all the highlights basically of how I put this table together up until the, you know, you know where I am right now. So let's let's jump into it and have a quick look. Uh, you can see I've, we've already jumped in part way here. I, I wasn't sure if I was going to record this, <clears throat> excuse me, but I decided to throw a camera on. This step that I'm doing right now, actually, let's just, these these rings here are what I laser cut on the on the lasers to give us the shapes that you see on the table, which I'll fill full of resin a little bit later on. And what I'm doing right now is totally redundant. It's totally unnecessary. If I did this again, I wouldn't do this step. I'm basically taking some filler, some gap filler in that corking gun and trying to blend those, you know, um, those rings into the table. Just flatten them out a little bit. They're only three mil high, so not very deep. Deep enough to put some resin into later on to give us that marshy sort of boggy sort of wetland look. But, uh, you know, not high enough to be, you know, you know, unusual on the table so i thought i'd blend them in with this filler uh it worked you know it's super messy at this stage totally redundant though if i if i was going to do this again i'd totally skip this step and save myself a bunch of time uh it was just totally not necessary you know when i come in with the sculptor mold in a minute which we'll see shortly you know that would have been perfectly fine i come back with that sculptor mold anyway and do exactly the same thing and go over all of this so massive waste of time this sculptor mold is just some homemade sculptor mold. I'm not sure if you're familiar with sculptor mold, but it's sort of like a modeling compound. This is just basically cellulose paper powder with some plaster in it. I think I've used some hydrocal in this, mix it up with a little bit of water until it's kind of like cottage cheese. And, um, and then we go ahead and apply that to the board. Lovely, gross, sticky, messy step this one. I love it. I first start by applying patches to the table and I've just thrown clumps down onto the table and I'm just blending it out into the table. So I get a little bit of undulation. So my board's not entirely flat. This does cause a problem a little bit later on for me when I intend to put terrain on top of the table. It kind of makes it a bit difficult because the table's not flat. You know, it's got all this, you know, undulation in it, which looks cool. But when you try and put a piece of terrain on it, that's got a flat base, it's a bit weird. Now this stuff, just like sculptor mold, you can uh, you know polish it a little bit. I'm just using a you know a spray bottle with some water here and polishing that off. One of the problems that you do have, or I've had with this step, was you know you get little chunks drying on the table, and as you try and rub those in, or or, or, or sort of as you're applying more layers, you get these hard, dry bits of plaster which are, are loose on the board. At this point, I'm just going to stop this here. Wait, that's the wrong button. This button. At this point here, I realize I'm going to have a problem with being able to put terrain on this table. So I go off and find some of that really big chunky bark. Now, it's a, super difficult to find that uh, here in Melbourne. And I've seen people get it in, in, in Sydney, and but I can't find it anywhere. This bark I raided out of the garden at uh, one of the local huge big shopping centers here up at, up at Northland, not far from me. Uh, they had some large chunks of pine bark in their garden. You can't, I just can't find big chunks like this anymore. Anyway, so I'm thinking now at this stage, I'm going to put some bark on the table and it's going to be part of the table. I'm going to glue it down and that's what's going to give me my line of sight blocking and, you know, a little bit of cover and essentially, you know, play this table as a swamp board. Now, obviously there's nothing huge big on this table, but, uh, you know, it kind of worked, you know, okay. Scott and I have played a, a game on this table and it kind of worked. You know, I think it's going to evolve uh, as uh, as the project continues. So I was quite happy with this. I'd go ahead and glue all these uh, bark chunks down. Now, here we go. This is what I was talking about with that sculptor mold. That, that step that I did at the beginning with the gap filler, totally irrelevant because I'm coming back in anyway with this, you know, homemade sculptor mold and blending all of those uh, rings into the table. I didn't need to do the gap filler. It was a waste of time, waste of material you know, just t t totally irrelevant. I'm really happy with how this is coming along. It, it looks really, really nice. This does take a little bit of time to dry, but um, you know, I'm doing a little bit of work on this after after work each night. And you can see, at, you know, at this stage, it's kind of difficult to see. I'm, I'm trying to get a shot here as close to table level as I can, which I think I failed. But, uh, you know, there's enough pools on this table that we can fill with resin later on to give us the appearance of a, of a marshy, swampy board. Um, 
I'm just blending these rocks into the table. I'm trying to go for that look that you see in, uh, is it the first Hobbit movie when they're leaving Erebor, where the dwarves are leaving after Smaug has attacked and, you know, they're, they're you know, you know, retreating across the swamp. This is an important step with bark is to give it a good sealant with PVA. This is a 50-50 mix PVA and water. And I'm giving each of those pieces of bark a really good rub down with some of that PVA to, you know, make sure that that bark doesn't come loose or start to flake and chip away. I go ahead and add a little bit of, I think this is cat litter here. You can see cat litter natural uh, to the to those, uh, those rocky outcrops. My spray gun at this stage is not working properly. You know, the cone that's coming out of this spray gun should be like this big. But, it, you know, it wasn't until I'd finished painting this board that I realized that, that the filter, you can see how fine that is. For an airbrush this size, this has got a 1.8 millimeter needle in it. It should be spraying, spraying a massive cone. I didn't realize until after I'd done this that the filter inside hadn't been cleaned the last time it was used. Um, but you can see I'm fiddling with it. It's driving me absolute nuts. I'm going off to check the, the pressure, make sure everything is right, fine. But um, anyway, so we go ahead and spray this table. Uh, I sprayed this this dark brown. I don't know what it is. It's a dark brown color from the paint section at the hardware store. And then I come in with a lighter color to spray the pools. Just so I've got a little bit of definition. They still need a lot of work and, and I do that progressively. And I faff around with different sorts of things throughout this project. Um, but you know, it's been great fun so far. It's been relatively quick. I think this is probably the third evening I've spent working on it. You know, just do a, a couple of hours here and there after work, um, to, tr to try and, uh, you know, get this done. Could have sped this clip up a little bit, Viv. Well done. I hope everyone is keeping well. What are you working on? What's new in your hobby world? I'm really looking forward to building more tables like this for our, our games of a middle earth strategy battle game. I'd like to have a reasonable collection so that, you know, as we, as we get into filming more and more battle reports, we've got a good selection of stuff to, to play on. I give all the rocks a, a very simple brown, uh, sorry, a gray dry brush, you know, mid tone, and then uh, a highlight on top of this. Pretty standard stuff so far. There's that highlight. You can see it's quite a nice contrast. And it, you know, it works well. It's not, not nice and simple. Now this step here, I'm spraying it with that weathering spray that I've mentioned a few times. Unfortunately, you can't get this, um, but it's just helping to add a few extra tones to uh, the the rocks. And I think I come back afterwards and yeah, go go back over, give one final highlight with that, uh, that high colored gray. And that's the rocks done. Here we go, time to time for some landscaping. This is the, the fun part and the most time consuming. I basically uh, put down a whole bunch of PVA. I do the boards in halves, maybe thirds. I can't quite remember. Uh, put down some neat PVA on the board, spray it with a little bit of water, and then I spread it around. Do I do the table in halves? I can't, I can't remember. It's been weeks. I need to finish this off. Now I'm just putting down some homemade uh, flock. This is made from sawdust. I've got a video on my channel and you can find that. I'll put it up. Where are we? I'll put it all the way up there and you can go watch that. And I know how to make some very simple flock out of some sawdust. Fairly old technique, but um, you know, it works. Not as great as foam flock, but you know, that's not as easy to make as this stuff is. The board ends up being way more green than I wanted it to be. So I'm going through now trying to put some dirt. This is dirt out of my garden that I baked in the oven to, you know, get rid of any, you know, nasties. And I'm trying to throw some of this dirt onto the table to just, you know, dirty it up a little bit. And before I go ahead and seal all of this down, I've got to make sure that I clear out all those uh, swamp puddles, those little boggy marshes to make sure that, you know, when I come back and put my resin in a little bit later on, you know, it's, it's relatively clear. using a straw there on some of these very small bits to blow out that I can't get a brush into because some of the rings are very, very small. Anyway, I use a straw to blow out the loose uh, flock that's in there. Just spraying it down with a mix of isopropyl alcohol and some water, 50-50 ISO and water, just to uh, help break the surface tension of the glue that's going to get sprayed on top of here. You can see it's already started soaking up some of that PVA that's underneath. And now I'm spraying this down with probably a 1 to 10 mix of water and glue it's maybe one to six i can't remember i thin it just enough to be able to spray it through the spray bottle i 
this needs to dry there we go now we're on to putting on some static grass you know i'm experimenting all the time every time i build anything or do anything i'm experimenting i've tried a couple of different flocks on this table and different application methods and this was the quickest and easiest i just sprayed down some patches and with my you know homemade static grass applicator you know i applied some static grass that was just randomly sitting around you know i'm not overly happy with the colors on this table if i built another one i'd probably uh you know use slightly different colors and then you know go through a different sort of process but you know this one's coming up okay it'll be fine by the time i've finished it um you know I'm, i put a shirt over my vacuum cleaner there so that when i suck up any excess static grass i can just push it out onto the table it doesn't actually get vacuumed up it's not looking too bad. It's way more green than I wanted it to be. Um, you know, you can see in these shots here that I've started already applying some, uh, you know, landscaping tufts and reeds and stuff to it. But that's where we are so far. That's it. Part one. Now is the time consuming part where I'm adding in all the reeds, all the tufts, all the clump foliage. Um, and it's taking a long time. But I think it's going to be worth it. You know, I experiment every time I build something. You know, there's there's really, really talented people out there that I could probably learn a great deal from. Um, and I should probably spend some time watching their videos. But, uh, you know, I just can't stop myself from trying. You know, what's going to happen if I do this? What's going to happen if I do this? So there we go. That's part one of me building the swamp board. Part two will hopefully be wrapped up sometime this week. All well, the building of it and the filming of it. And then I can edit that. Hopefully next week we can pump out part two for my, you know, swamp board. <laughs> we'll see what it looks like. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, I hope you're all keeping well. I'll see you soon. Bye.